Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cool. So, um, we're going to do this, which is we're going to be creating a house, okay? So, you're going to be building a house for me. That's your, this is your first assignment. Um, and the first thing I want you to do is, like, I remember I told you to go look at all the houses and all? Did anyone actually do it? Yeah. Did y'all? Yeah. So head. proud. Okay. Did y'all do it for like one day and just forget after that? Or no. Okay, cool. Um, that's good because there's a load of really good ones in Sketchfab. Um, and so a lot of them start with this kind of thing uh, where they do concept. Like I understand people who can't draw or like are not comfortable at being the best at drawing. Like it can be hard, but you definitely need to have at least the layouts and stuff. Of, uh, oh, I need a window, I need, like, I know I need a fence, I know I need some bushes or whatever. You definitely need that, and that's, again, is why we had this portfolio requirement for this, you know, because you kind of do need to do a little bit of 2D layouts. Um, so there is a thing called a turnaround, a front view and a side view, at minimum. Um, and everyone's seen the T-pose, right? For, like, we'll talk about this a lot more next semester. Yeah, T-pose, like, literally looks like that. Like, nowadays it's here, kind of like there. Yeah, and front, side, and back. What? When you, when your character's in your game, you have to do You know why, though? <laughs> well, I don't know why. <laughs> because that's, that's the base so, yeah, yeah, that's the before it's animated. Uh, yeah. I think my one too. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Walks across the bridge, and it's just like a background character. But when they get into the location, they come off the animation, disappear. They go into their T-pose, and they actually fall off the animation. That's Scott. That's like. There's a glitch where two hit days, and then he's in certain ways, he just suddenly goes. Dark Souls has the one where, like, not maybe we'll know about it, but uh, if you leave the game on playing for, like, 12 hours, there's a memory leak, or it was before it got patched out. And there's a memory leak, and after a while, the bosses forget moves because they don't have enough memory to say yeah so they literally they like the animations still work and all but they just don't do like most of their hardcore moves so there's one i can't remember one like that will summon stuff but if you leave it on too long it, it literally forgets how to summon stuff it just punches you that's really shit <laughs> punching you and um, so either way um so yeah we start off well we're gonna build uh we're gonna build this house and we we need to start off with concept art um, so referencing is the first thing, which you all have done, looking at how you should definitely look at more. Um, and then you want this like front view and side view at a minimum. Um, so we want it, we're only going to do the outside. And we want to ideally have something that's like reusable a lot in the game. Um, so something that like, see that one, it, it's, I can turn it around and it looks quite different. You know, I can use it quite a few different places and it looks quite interesting. So don't make like a generic block house. You want something that's kind of like maybe the main character's house or something like that. It's got a bit of character. Um, the other thing to figure out is what style you want to build it in. <coughs> and you need to really like hone in on what the style means. So obviously you have super realistic architectural thing, which depending on the game may work. Like, you know, that would, a better version of that, like the rendering's not that great on it, but that would fit in GTA or something, right? It, like, it just looks like a generic house which is also fine, depending on what you're building it for. The one on the left looks like more like, I don't know, it could fit in Torchlight or like, you know, Zelda. Zelda, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Like who? A bit, yeah. Those. So like, um, one thing I noticed though, the styles, can you see a big difference between the two of them? Like, what's the biggest difference? <coughs> Besides color, okay, color is a huge one, and the textures are a huge one. So like different, different, uh, cartoony textures versus like a realistic textures. And again, for this one, if you just get textures online, as long as you tell me where they're from, it's okay. All right, uh, you don't have to make your own textures. Um, is there anything in the silhouette of them though? Um, how so? Like. Yeah. So the realism is scale is number one. So you see, like, that lamp is freaking huge. If you think that door is a door, that lamp's like yay big, right? It's fucking gigantic, which is completely fine because it's the style it is. I don't even know what that thing on top is. Is that like a windmill? It's like a little. No, it's like a little key turny thing. Um, 
so yeah it's really like scale is really pushed and you see like this is a big one that little thing where the the lamppost kind of goes eh, off to the side for stylized um kind of like pictures that's done a lot this kind of like a little wobbly bit and you see the roof it's not like this roof is like flat. it makes sense there's like a there's like a beam and the two things come off it takes rain away it makes sense because it's realistic this one has this like curve in the middle that completely doesn't make sense but makes it look silhouette wise really interesting and really cool um it, and it makes it look cute to like see even this pit i don't know if you can see it but it's like up like that you know it's not like straight um, um and even this one which is straight is kind of up at an angle so the angles all don't they all don't like follow they're not parallel right in the real realistic one everything's parallel in the stylus one everything kind of is a little wonky or bent or whatever it is um the other thing to note when you're let's say you're creating that plank right for that post how would you build it a box probably uh you'd do the box and then what would you do huh so i would suggest actually texture it first so you have the box you know you're going to bend it you texture it first and then you bend it and stretch it because that way the texture will follow exactly do you know what I mean? All right, so that's I would suggest it do it that way. Um, and also notice they have this like thick, thick to thin thing. So like the pulse isn't like even though it's not just a, a cylinder. Uh, sorry, a fucking cube that's just bent. They also made it a bit bigger at the top and also bent. So like all these kind of like playing with scale and exaggerating like perspective and stuff like that. That's all in there. And that's these are really small things, but they actually make a huge difference when you go to actually build it. Um, so we're going to do something called low poly. So low poly meaning that y you can't have that many polygons when you're building it. In max, when you press 7, the number 7, it will give you statistics. It shows you how many polygons you have in your scene at that time. Okay? Um, I'll show you that later. Um, so we want something that's really, really simple. You're going to have a poly count limit. What? <laughs> Um, the reason why we do this, so like in, in modern computers, um, it doesn't like poly counts, not really a thing anymore. Like it is, and it is like, you can't have millions and millions of polys, but a few hundred polys or a few thousand polys, it's really not that big a deal where it is a big deal is in, um, mobile. Um, but even there you can kind of get away with quite a lot. Like, so the reason why I'm doing this is if you can good, good at low poly, it means you have a really strong sense of silhouette and you have a really strong sense of like how to use your polys efficiently. So you are you are going to be a better 3D modeler if you're able to work with as few polys as possible. Um, yeah, so like just start really small first. So like if we look at this one, you see the planks of wood, you can literally just have two or three planks of wood and just repeat them all over, over and over and over everywhere. Um, don't try to do some huge giant thing. Don't. Don't make that that little character thing unless you're super comfortable with organic modeling. Right now, we're still in box modeling, so don't don't. I would suggest not trying to go crazy. Um, depends on the way you want to build it. Some people actually do this, even though we're not doing the inside. Some people actually go like and build like a layout. So, because when you look at it from the outside, even if you never see the inside, it makes sense. If you see like a little conservatory part in the front. Um, and it fits with like you know the garages on the side that if the layout makes sense top down it'll make sense when you look at it right the weirdest ones are some games where they just put it all together and it's weird because you have like you know the garage is right from the front door let's say which doesn't make sense right so sometimes the layout is important um, and then we're going to do this like front and side view minimum so for today what we're going to do is create this front and side view um, and i would actually suggest not going to photo for, like i would suggest referencing so go and look at loads of different photos and then I would suggest actually sketching it out. Like literally a really, really simple front view and a side view. It doesn't have to be the most beautiful thing in the world. Um, it just needs to be there so you know what to build. Um, <clears throat> close eye. Yeah, cool. Um, the poly count limit, by the way, is going to be... <laughs> I'm going to give you 1,500, which is quite a lot. 1,500 polys. That's a lot. A lot. I should probably make it 500. Um, now, no, that said, if I say 1,500 and you're like, gee, I can use whatever I want up to 1,500, 
if I see a cube that's like just a cube and has a hundred segments in it, and you're like, oh, but it's under it. That, that's also crap. <laughs> that's bad, like, because that's just stupid use of segments for no reason. So don't do that. Um, just be smart about it. If you, the lower you manage to get the poly count, the better, basically, um, for this for this scenario. Um, so yeah, we're gonna reuse a lot of shit. Like, be smart about how you reuse stuff. We've done this before. You've seen this. You've seen this, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's say we go to this one. Um, you see the way like the awning? It's the same awning over and over. The tables and chairs are the same table and chairs, but like they're reusing different configurations. So you just need to build one table, one chair. And after you texture it, it's just duplicated over and over loads. And it just makes it look a lot more alive and a lot more used than if you just put like one table and one chair. There. That's a very common issue, by the way. People like build one thing and be like, oh, I built this cool thing. And they put like one thing. So it's like literally one table, one chair. Anymore. Okay. Like it, just literally look at what a coffee house would be in real life. It would have loads of tables. It would have loads of chairs, but you can duplicate them. So it's fine. It, even little things like... Um, uh, this, these are literally just duplicated. Like one of them would have been fine. Two of them make sense. You got two refrigerators. It's fine. Uh, two of these, um, the awning, the awning beds, the window frames. See the little frames? Oh, frames are important, by the way. Um, a lot of time people will cut like a hole in, in the wall or a hole in the door. It just doesn't feel real. When you put a little frame around it, it makes a lot more sense, and people don't notice the issue. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of reuse shit in there. Like. You, you don't need to keep rebuilding a lot of stuff. And especially if you're using solid colors, which you can either use cartoon textures, up to you, or you can use solid colors. If you use solid colors, it's just you just need like one brown block and everything else that's brown and a block can just use that one brown block, right? And this is why the planning part is so important. If you have that concept and you know like I need 20 brown blocks, I only need to make one of them and I can copy them later. That kind of makes sense. What? Can you make like a building like that, like a commercial building at home? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, you can make uh, like a funky looking one. Like, I mean, like this is fine. If you made this, I'd be happy. Because there's loads of little things. It's like little, like dumpster at the back. And again, you could copy the dumpster. Yeah. Yeah. See, that was the thing. Um, I wanted to start this the week before and have this be the week for reviewing it. So, um, and that review week is the field trip. Um, remind me about that after I finish this and let me look at the dates. All right, cool. So, this is just some other ones. Um, and you can see from these, like, they're so simple and so easy. And these three are exactly the same freaking house. They just have different textures on. Can you see? Like, they're exactly the same. They literally just have different colors on. Um, and these the two, one. yeah, yeah. That's, like, just a different top here. Um, and this is the same as this. Is there any difference? Oh, yeah, the sign and the, sign and the little bar. Um, so the color textures can change a lot, like... Um, oh, yeah, this one's just a burger shop. So these all four are basically the same. And they just change the top sign and some of the color textures. And this is smart reuse, okay? Like, so this is really, really smart. Um, it just means you don't have to make like, oh, I need a burger shop model, and an ice cream shop model, and a donut shop model. I'm just gonna make a shop model, and then just change the top bits. Um, remember this while you're making it. So people play games to like, you know, escape. Like it's, it's a form of escapism. So don't just make a box standard house. Because even in GTA 5, the houses are like mansions. They're like gorgeous houses. Um, in like, I think every game I've played, even the person's like in a rundown apartment or whatever, but the rundown apartment's better than any apartments I've ever been in. So uh, it's true. Like, um, so it's it's this kind of escapism. We want to play with this fantasy bit. So we can use real life, but we exaggerate it. Um, this is, these examples are really old, but they're very... Um, relevant because they're from real life. So, <clears throat> I won't play New Vegas. Right, Y'all have never seen this slice before, have you? I don't think I've shown you this. Okay. Um, if when you've played New Vegas, right, like has anyone been to actual Las Vegas? Oh, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. I haven't either, so it's fine. That's the real sign on the left and the real, the, the fake signs on the right. 
So besides the obvious thing that it's all weathered and it's like post-apocalyptic or whatever, what's the biggest change? It's way taller. This huge scale, right? And why is that? That's one part of it. So there's a mechanical reason. We want to see it from far away. Any other reason though? It's because it's cool. So it looks more imposing. It's taller and therefore like more impressive. Like stuff that's more impressive. This is an example of where they changed it because the real life one actually doesn't look that good. And they changed it in the... Uh, can you see that? Like the, the writing is a lot more Wild West theme. The, like, the left one just looks... Looks like a sled with a sign on it. Like the right one actually looks like it might have come from Frontier Times. In this one, they basically doubled the height. It's the same. The, I can't remember the name of the casino. It's it's not a casino in real life. It's just an observatory tower. But they doubled the height of it, and they also doubled the floor space. So part of that's mechanical for players to be able to move around and stuff. But part of that's also for impressive scale and just to make it um, feel cool. Because remember when you're making stuff for games, right? Um, claustrophobia is a real thing as in like you're not it's not the fact that you're designing um, so people don't feel claustrophobic because there's loads of games that you are really claustrophobic it's just more that if you build things to kind of real world scale it feels a little bit smaller than it does because you're watching to a, t a small screen right so everything feels a bit smaller so you kind of scale up a tiny bit for impressiveness like even something like a brick freaking wall this is like one of the forts it's just a brick wall they made it like almost 50% taller and like the spikes are way more spiky. It looks, looks a lot more imposing and impressive, even something as small as that, right? Um, the other thing to remember is to start getting into the habit of using unit sizes. So we've got a grid in 2ds Max. You know that we set it one unit is one unit, one, one meter is one meter. So in the old Tomb Raider, one Lara Croft is, uh, everything was one Lara Croft. So if you use one Lara Croft high, she can climb it. If it's one and a half, she can't. Simple as that. And they still use it to this day, right? So like you see a lot of games, like Skyrim does it, like loads of games do it. Where it's actually unit-based, they just make the units kind of craggly so you don't notice that it's a unit-based. Um, it also allows you to do this kind of stuff. So if you're making interiors or even exteriors, like let's say you're making like a walkway outside. If you're doing it in unit sizes, you know you need to go two down, four right, two up. And if I go back left, I'll connect. It'll, it'll fit correctly into the unit sizes. So just be smart about it. Um, and then just like hide a little bit. So like um, if there is a bit that this is from Skyrim, so it's a unit grid, grid base, as you see. You don't notice when you're playing it, but it is. And then they hide the corners with like other meshes and stuff. So in our case, we're doing a low poly house. You might want to hide it with like a little low poly bush or like some frames, you know, like when you cut a... A hole in the wall maybe you want to make like a little frame around it that hides that cut um same like this where there's offset angles you hide the cuts and stuff cool um this one so if we look at this, this is from bioshock infinite um it's a bridge so a bridge is symmetrical but even though it's a man-made symmetrical bridge it still has asymmetry in it so part of the asymmetry is the placement of people there's different placements of people and, and the hot dog stand on one side, but what else? The what? Sure, the background, but let's say like if we look at only the bridge itself. There's a little slopey, um, even the texture in the middle. They didn't just like copy paste. You know, it's not like a flipped texture. It's an actual full texture and the left side is different from the right side because then it looks a lot more realistic. Like nothing's ever perfectly symmetrical and that's what? That map is so confusing. Walking around that place is just a headache. It's literally linear. You always get lost because everything looks the same. You think you go in one direction, but it's not the same. Did anyone else get lost in it? I got lost in it. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, like uh, this is just an example from the Skyrim like slides that they showed off. So, like, a the, the first one looks a lot more organic and realistic than the second one it's like a flip copy so it just looks fake as hell all right um so like have a look at have a look at other things and how they build stuff so even something like skyrim you see the way like there's a reuse pillar those columns are reused every single wood plank can just be reused over and over um the other houses in the village are basically built out of the same blocks as the first house 
you know they're all kind of like reusing stuff smart ways um, and this is an example of it's realistic but they kind of push the silhouette a little bit so that the roofs are super high a little bit higher than they would be in real life kind of thing um, and then I just have a few more things of like don't ever do stuff like that way when you pull stuff out and it gets to an infinitely sharp point or an infinitely thin thing don't do that like add volume if you're trying to have a spike don't just pull something out so it gets really tiny and thin like extrude it and then make it smaller so it has some volume so kind of cool um, this they both look exactly the same if you have a straight cylinder and it has segments on it for no fucking reason I will penalize you I definitely will because that that blue cylinder makes no sense like why does it need those segments when all it's doing is just going straight um, so like this is I don't know what that's about. Um, you saw quick slice already. You've seen these. There's inset extrude and bevel. Do you have you all seen this? Yeah. yeah? Cool. And you all seen bridge. And you know, one thing about bridge, by the way, it can join things that are different poly counts. It can work, but it kind of gets a bit messy, as you can see. It does work, but it is a bit messy. And again, smoothing groups. Just a reminder of like use this well, especially because you have so few poly counts. Using smoothing groups is a really great way of like accentuating differences between areas or like differences between edges. Because the one on the left just looks like blah, and the one on the right has very clear defined. You want everything to be blocky. Most of the time, so like, um, let me go back to this. Uh, uh, like those pushes there, right? Um, I mean, yeah, like you don't want smoothing groups in those ones. Um, and this particular model probably doesn't have any smoothing groups, I would say. Um, but uh, but something like this does have smoothing groups. So like that, that little bent pose, for example, would probably need a smoothing group. So it doesn't look like one side and one side, depending on how, depending, it really depends on, like, on what look you're going to go for, which is why the style thing is so important. So for the rest of today, literally all you have to do um, is research, figure out which style you want to do. And I want to see, before we go, I want to see like a sketch, a top, uh, sorry, a front and a side view sketch of what you're trying to build, because then I can be if I can see that, I can be like, oh, that's too hard, or that's too easy, or there's an easy way to do a certain thing, which you may not know. So just really quick, I just want to show you the statistics thing. Um, sorry, just one sec was it loads. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, so by default, that's you don't see anything. If I hit number seven, oop, it shows me the total poly counts. So if I make a box, see it says like 12 polys. Uh, let me hit F4, and that's a good question. Let me hit F4 to see the edges. How do I have 12 polys? Um, there are six, yeah. That's two sides for each. Uh, either way, 1,500 is your maximum. There we go. Oh, that's really old on. See, I'm on like 972 already. Uh, also, this, oh, by the way, only shows you the total. So I may not know how much this sphere is. Um, and they've changed it here, which is annoying as hell. It should be in one of these. What? That'll be fun. Uh, viewport global settings. So right click on any of these. Viewport global settings, go to statistics, and I can do total plus selection. Uh, and you can show like which one do you want. Do you want edge count, polygon count? I just want polygon count. So now if I apply, you see the way it shows me the sphere is 960. 
so I know that I'm losing 960 polys just because of the sphere. So you're really right. losing No, well, no, you can use a sphere, just like go here and then like drop the segments. Now I'm on 24 polys. Um, if I want it to be a bit more like that, uh, that's 120, which is a lot better than 960. Um, so depending on what you're building, like, why do you want a sphere? What do you have? Well, just in case you want a sphere. Yeah, okay. Either way. On the off chance you want a sphere, there you go. All right. Um, so, yeah, just be smart about, like, these things. As I said, this yoke is stupid. This makes no sense because if I make a copy of this and I drop all the height segments, when I render them, they look exactly the freaking same. You know that pole? So the left one is stupid. What? You know that pole that's Yeah. A segment. It has to have a segment if you're making an angle change. So if I'm doing this and I'm like, edit poly, and for some weird reason I want to do, like, for some weird reason, I want this shape. I have to have segments. I need to have segments, obviously, because otherwise I can't. I can't do it with this one. There's no way. So if you're if you have segments in for a reason, that's completely G. I'm also going to be like, why is there so many segments on the round side? Like, it doesn't need to be that smooth. So just be careful. Like, try and use the fewest polys possible, just so you can add more shit. It depending on your style. So you probably want to pick a style. So like you know that low poly ones. Uh, literally, if you go low, oh, go Sketchfab. I don't know. Actually, never heard of that. Uh, that'd be cool if it does. I won't. I never used it, but that'd be cool. Um, so like you can, if once you figure out what style it is, and you can find images. Uh, sorry, um, models of that online. Again, the same thing. Like this one's quite cool. It's probably a bit bright. The colors. Um, you can go to the model inspector and hit wireframe, which will show you exactly where the segments were cut. This one is quite a good one. This is not students. This one is quite a good one though. This is actually quite good. So yeah, this is the standard I'm expecting. You think I'm messing, but I'm not. No. This is quite cool. Like I definitely, this is good. Like stuff like this is kind of what I'm. I, I would like you to have. Those are little planks, yeah. So they're if, uh, yeah, they're actual planks. See. Yeah. So like sometimes if you want treaty nuts, you kind of have to have a poly, which is why like be smart. I think this whole thing is. Tell you now, 957 triangles, which is about 500 or 400 polys, something like that. So this is nothing like, and this is quite cool. So you have 1,500 polys to play. Wowza space.